it's really the legacy, the environmental legacy that we've been left with from a long history of extractive industry in this region, particularly coal mining. So acid mine drainage is water that is coming out of an underground coal mine or off of a, a surface mine. And a lot of times we think of that water as very orange or red and having um, that very vibrant color, but really, all that means is that it's mine drainage that has acidity and it has a high concentration of metals that isn't normal for stream water or for surface water. So those streams are, are pretty much devoid of life. The acidity makes it almost impossible for aquatic organisms to, to live their lives, to function in that kind of environment. So every single day, 6,000 pounds of iron go into Sunday Creek just from the True Town Discharge site. So that's three tons of iron every single day. And if you multiply that out through the year, it's over two million pounds every single year. So our main goal here is to clean up streams. We have water pouring out of a mine at uh, over a million gallons a day of high, heavily polluted water pouring out of the mine and going right into Sunday Creek. What we're going to do when we build the full-scale treatment plant is collect that water as it comes out of the mine and route it to a water treatment plant. And that water treatment plant will um, remove the iron and neutralize all the acid. And then the water, once that water is treated, then it will be released to Sunday Creek. And at that point, we've restored the biological integrity of the stream. So the challenge for me was to come up with a process that was free, that was cheap, which is what led us to, to this idea of trying to produce a commercial product from the waste. And that's where I really got out of my depth and needed John's help. Um, John, as a renowned artist, um, he works with oil paints all the time and he understands how a pigment is supposed to function. And he also has a good sense of, of color. And yeah, he figured out that if we took this uh, sort of yellow brown gertite, he was able, to, he could bake it and turn it into this brilliant red hematite. And uh, he's even at a higher temperature, a really high temperature, he was able to convert it into a, a brilliant uh, violet. That is, I think, the most innovative part of this project is that the thing that is the problem has now become the biggest piece of the solution. So by by really flipping the narrative and, and changing the way we're looking at the, the iron itself, the pollutant, we've been able to find a way where, you know, we've been able to value add and create this commodity out of something that at other sites, it's just landfilled. People actually pay to dispose of the iron sludge at other treatment sites. And here we are collecting it and processing it in such a way that we can yield this really valuable commodity. And it's a very pure iron hydroxide and it's used um, throughout the U.S. economy for, as a pigment. It's um, a very prevalent pigment. We, we use uh, millions of tons a year of this material. A lot of it we import from China. Um, but we can produce at this site, we could produce over 6,000 pounds a day of this material from this one uh, seep. So the Sugarbush Foundation and, and their board members, they were really able to understand why the development of the business was important. They have walked with us all the way from the lab now to where we're getting ready to build the full-scale facility. And I don't think that we would be where we are as quickly as we, we've gotten here without their initial support. We would not have had the relationship that we have with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and therefore we would have never been able to achieve the $3.5 million in abandoned mine land reclamation funding that we have now to build the full scale treatment plant. So where we are now is intrinsically tied to the initial funding and the support and the belief from the Sugarbush Foundation. So from the very beginning, this was integrated in all of my classes and uh, I always had undergraduate researchers working on it in addition to graduate students. 
And I found myself in my first year in engineering kind of feeling a little bit stuck, like I didn't really know what I was going to do with this, where I was going, and then finding out that I could work on something that was real and made a difference. And we get to these milestones and I get to say, I had a role in that, I, I designed this, I built this, I tested this. And that has led me to believing that like, I can really love this career and get something out of it. My hope, my vision for this project is that not only have we built the full-scale treatment plant at Truetown, and that we are intercepting that million plus gallons of pollution every day, and we are keeping it from going in and killing Sunday Creek for seven miles, as well as the plant definitely making a product that is valuable and that the value of that product in the marketplace has indeed raised enough funding that it is a sustainable operation. And I'd also like to see, at least for the art paint materials manufacturing companies, I'd like to see them using our pigments. I'd like artists around the world to understand that they have a choice and a responsibility within their profession to source the materials sustainably if there's that option. I want us to be that option.